Hello everyone and welcome back to Becoming a Polyglot. Um, today I have a Q&A video for you because I think about two weeks ago I asked on my Instagram stories um, whether you had some questions for me, also because I get the same questions in my comments often. So <laughs> I thought let's just dedicate a video to that and yeah, answer some of the questions you may have about me, about my channel about everything really. So without further ado, let's just get started. Oh yeah, if you don't know me, <laughs> if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Vera. I am an English teacher and student here in Holland. And this channel is dedicated to me learning languages. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Although the study with me sessions have been limited lately, they have been changed into some uh, vlogs, actually. As you may have seen my vlogs of my trip to Spain, which was super, super cool, where I got to practice my Spanish, of course. It's just a bit of a mixture of learning different languages, cultures, everything. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> I hope you will follow me along. That'll be great. Okay, now let's get started with question one. This is a question I got really really often. What does it mean to be a polyglot? A polyglot is basically someone who knows five or more languages rather fluently. <laughs> you may know the terms bilingualism, multilingualism and then you also have polyglots and in this case it's someone who knows if you look it up online, someone who knows five languages or more. Uh, I always thought that it was it started at four languages but apparently Five. I don't know. The term polyglot is mostly used for people who learn languages for the sake of learning languages, not that you perhaps particularly have to use them uh, for like school or your job or whatever. Like multilingualism or bilingualism are terms for people who use these languages throughout their daily lives, two or three languages. A polyglot <laughs> are just people who know a lot of languages for the sake of learning them and getting to know them and wanting to talk to different people and uh, learn about different cultures, basically. Yeah, a very important question afterwards. Am I a polyglot? No! <laughs> I am not! I'm not a polyglot! No, no, no! No! <laughs> oh, when I started this channel I knew, okay, I'm gonna dedicate this channel to me learning different languages. Some languages I have been learning from the age of 10. Um, other languages I just added last year. Um, so I thought, what would be a great name? Perhaps becoming a polyglot. Like one day, perhaps I'll be a polyglot. If you follow me along, perhaps we'll all become polyglots. How fun is that? Am I a polyglot right now? No! <laughs> there are actually two languages I'm fluent in, which is my mother tongue, Dutch, because I'm from Holland, and English, because I'm an English teacher and I study English. I don't have any other languages that I'm really fluent at. So, now you know, I'm not a polyglot. I'm not, I've never, I, <laughs> that's why it's becoming a polyglot. Yeah, I know, I got so many messages about this. So I thought, let's just um, put it out there. When I thought of this uh, YouTube and Instagram name, I didn't really think it through. Uh, and, and the comments I was getting on that name was like, no, <laughs> you're getting the wrong impression about me. Because what people will say about me is, oh, but you're not that good at French, so how can you be a polyglot? I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> it's becoming, it's becoming. I got another question as well, why do you want to be a polyglot? Mm, like I said, I didn't really think uh, think about the name thoroughly. Uh, why do I want to be a polyglot? Well, first of all, I love getting to know different cultures, languages, people. I'd like to communicate to, with everyone. When I was in Spain, I actually enjoyed it so much talking in Spanish to um, uh, the people over there. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I met so many nice, um, I met so many nice people in Madrid and Valencia and I just really enjoy hearing about their culture, learning about their culture. Um, so therefore I'm going to also do a switch in my uh, studies. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this bachelor first. So I have actually my English degree, one year to go, uh, out of four years. So that's good. 
one year and then I will study international studies which regards more of what I love learning about different languages and cultures um whether well, it's anywhere around the world actually I uh, I don't really mind um now I'm, I'm really involved in Asia with Chinese and Korean but I always loved well particularly Western Europe uh, of course, the history of, of England, Great Britain, but also definitely <laughs> France and Spain. I haven't been to Italy yet, but I would love to visit Italy, definitely in terms of their history. Oh, I, I think it must be beautiful. So, uh, yeah, I know my channel's called Becoming a Polyglot, but don't take it too literally. <laughs> I just want to have fun whilst learning languages, okay? Do you actually spend every day all the time on all these different languages um just to uh for the people who don't know me i learn french spanish chinese and korean uh at some point i did czech as well because i wanted to go to prague for my minor and for a trip and that didn't all work out so i dropped the language um so i have four left and then i have my mother tongue dutch of course which i speak and then english um, and I also had German <laughs> for six years of my life. Do I actually spend time on all these languages? No, no, not at all. No, 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 no. Um, I think I'm really a uh, realistic YouTube channel, if I may say so myself. I am definitely not your language girl who spends or who will make a video with a title such as I spent five hours each and every day of each and every week i don't know i'm learning this language and now i'm fluent no <laughs> no learning languages for me is a hobby it really is a hobby um at some point it was actually my um well <laughs> study i did a minor in spanish so of course i had to take some exams i did two exams in chinese and now i'm applying for the topic one exam or applying i have applied for the topic one exam but honestly it's it's literally just a hobby to me and i do this in between well everything in between daily life i have all these apps on my phone on my ipad and i just really enjoy it to be honest i really enjoy learning languages especially if you dive deeper into how a language is formed and that's what I'm learning at my current bachelor about the English language, which I find very interesting. But if you can compare that to, uh, for instance, Spanish or French, I find it even more interesting. Uh, that's also why I started actually to learn Chinese, because that's just an entirely interesting language um, and culture. So yeah, no, I don't spend every day on all these languages. Are you then getting fluent at uh, one if you don't do that regularly? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no. It, it, it depends on your goals. I would say it depends on your goals. I think it would be great if I were to speak in French fluently, Spanish, anything. I think that would be great. But I know that's not doable right now. <laughs> Whenever there is an exam in Holland, because these aren't always available here, then I will just apply and see how I did. Another question, is taking exams that important, language exams? Well, no, of course it's not important if you don't want to. I mean, it all depends on your goals. I know that for my future studies, international studies, that it would be very useful if I have my topic one exam and the fact that I already have HSK 1 and 2, I think they will very much appreciate that. So therefore, <laughs> um, I'm doing those exams. But I don't have any diploma in French, other than my high school diploma. I don't have any diplomas in, in German, other than my high school diploma. So, you know what I mean? Um, it depends on your personal goals. It's also a way to see if you're on the right track to your goal to see at which level you may be but you don't have to you can just go online there are a lot of mock tests out there mock exams just do those they're free is it hard learning four languages i got a lot of sweet comments also and some uh, funny comments saying like really you should not be learning that many languages at once and i would like to get this 
out. <laughs> when you were born and raised in the Netherlands, you have to learn multiple languages at once. Uh, I went to a certain high school. We have a really different, difficult school system, so I'm not going to explain it. We have a school system based on levels. In terms of high school, in terms of universities, we all have different levels. Okay, so I went to a, um, well, middle level-ish. And there I learned English, French and German all at once. You were able after two years to get rid of some of your subjects, of course, uh, but I chose to keep French and German. So yeah, for four years I did that. I already had English since I was 10 years old. Then when I was 12, French and German were added. And then I went to a um, different school afterwards. And I got Spanish as well, <laughs> business German and business English. Then I went to my current university for uh, my bachelor in English as an English teacher and did my Spanish minor. I am born and raised learning different languages at once. And of course, this has to be something for you if you're uh, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are either very well at learning languages or at maths and sciences and I don't understand the logic of maths. I really, really don't. But I do know how to keep languages apart. <laughs> and I really enjoy doing so and comparing them to each other. The more, I, the more knowledge I gain about either of those languages or of all of those languages, the more interesting I think it becomes. Um, especially when you finally see the pattern in some of these um, grammar rules or I hate grammar by the way uh, <laughs> language rules that's when I well that's what I really enjoy so I'm used to this <laughs> uh, do you see fast progress once again no because I'm really really focused on other things in my life um, I am showing the progress of what I am learning, <laughs> like the lower levels of Chinese and Korean. The, the fastest progress I, I've had is with Spanish. I had Spanish when I was 16 till 18, then I stopped, started again when I was 21 until last June, uh, where I did my Spanish minor. And that was the fastest progress I've ever, ever had. Also because I finally went to Spain for the first time. So that was really interesting to actually use the language as I've never been to Spain before. So definitely check out my vlogs of Spain. Oh, you could tell how excited I was by this trip. Oh my God, going to Madrid and Valencia. I mean, I cried on the plane because I hate flying, but <sighs> yeah, that was such a fun experience. I learned so much about myself. Wow. Why did you start this channel? Well, basically I started this channel uh, during the pandemic because I once I, I had a horrible breakdown during the first pandemic. I didn't know what was, go what was going on. I was in a horrible state of mind. And I thought, okay, well, we have enough time now. I better do something with it. So that's when I started learning Chinese as a joke, <laughs> which ended up becoming uh, very real. <laughs> um, and I thought, let's start a YouTube channel to also push myself into creating content about me learning languages. And this is my way to track my progress. I know people have fancy progress trackers and language planners, and I would love to have one of those. But I found out that I'm not that well at a language planner. I am very well at planning my entire life, but not my languages. And I think the the difference for me is that this is my hobby and for some people this is um, like mandatory for them to learn a language and then I would understand that you would plan it thoroughly but that's not the case for me just yeah well that so this was basically my accountability to put content out there it's so funny for me to look back at last year when I made all these kinds of videos with study with me, language progresses. And <laughs> now I made all these kinds of videos where I actually get to try out languages in the country themselves or with people around the world and going to like the Korean culture festival. I mean, that's just so exciting. The difference between the pandemic and after the pandemic. It's also not realistic for me anymore to make and create so much content as I did 
last year because uh <laughs> well like for everyone i think you'll have this too in your life uh, that everything is getting it or is already back to normal everything is back to normal so it also means that i have to get on track with more important things than sadly my youtube channel i got one very funny comment and i'm just gonna say this is from my one of my best friends who commented this because i think i, I told her the story have you ever been recognized in real life oh my god it's not like i have I don't know. I'm very happy with everyone who follows me along and everyone who watches my videos. So, um, <laughs> the chance of me getting recognized from my YouTube channel is very little. But <laughs> I was hosting an introduction to our bachelor and inviting new students over, telling them about the bachelor that I do and hopefully exciting them to apply as well. And this was online still because it was in December. We went in lockdown again. That month. And this one girl <laughs> stayed until the end online with all, all my teachers were there as well. And she said, yeah, Vera, I don't know really what she said anymore, but something like, yeah, Vera, um, it would be so great if we get uh, to meet each other because I was actually, I wanted to try out learning Chinese and I found your channel on YouTube and I didn't know that this was your school. So... How funny about you could go for coffee and like, oh my god, you should see my face. I started to get so incredibly red. What are the odds? Really? <laughs> what are the odds of me getting recognized at my own university? Oh my god. And my teachers didn't know that I had a YouTube channel. I know they're probably watching. Hi. <laughs> And of course, let's go for a cup of coffee. If anyone's in Amsterdam at some point, or Utrecht, which is a better city, in my opinion, um, definitely hit me up. And the last question, what's up for the future? Um, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very committed to my uh, bachelor studies. I really want to finish it as soon as possible, because sadly I found out that I'm not that I don't really want to be a teacher at this point. Um, but since I already did three years out of the four years of my bachelor studies, I thought, let's just finish it, get my degree, because perhaps someday I will go back to teaching and then I have that certificate, so that's good. I'm also very, very pleased with the fact that I now have my C2 Cambridge diploma. <laughs> I cried when I heard it. Oh my god, I heard it last month. Oh, I got my C2 diploma in English. Oh, I don't even have that diploma in Dutch. It means so, so incredibly so much to me to finally have reached a level of fluency in a foreign language. is just, it amazes me. Oh my god, I'm so proud of myself. Okay, but I will move on to international studies at the university in Leiden. Leiden is a beautiful city in Holland, definitely worth visiting. And this bachelor uh, is a different kind of level, like I told you. <laughs> it's still a bachelor, but a bit higher up. Um, but it's not a master's. I can't... Should I make a video about our Dutch school system? Because this is horrible to explain to anyone. Oh my god, everyone who's asking me about my school or what I'm doing, I don't know how to explain it. It's just so difficult to understand for foreigners how incredibly stupid and complicated our school system is. Especially now that I learn everything about it. I learn how to be a teacher here in Holland. You just realize how, sorry, fucked up this entire school system is in my opinion. Okay. So I'm going to do a different bachelor. <laughs> and during that bachelor, I get to choose a different continent around the world to learn uh, more about. So I could choose Asia, I could choose Europe. Um, and then it's also split into different uh, components in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, blah, blah, blah. So I'm still debating already debating whether I want to choose Western Europe, learn more about the things that I absolutely adore. But I also get to choose for Asia, of course. Um, I would be really interested in learning more about Asia as well and like actually learn it with a teacher in a classroom. I think that would be so interesting. It's just, um, 
I don't know what to do yet. I get to choose either one of the two. I get to choose anything, but I want to choose either one of the two. Um, I still have a year to decide. But yeah, it, it just sounds like such an interesting study. What I get to do with it is like work for an embassy, work for an international company. You could do anything, basically. I could go back to marketing communication. I could uh, still be a teacher, give speeches. I don't know, anything. I mean, I, the, the English degree is, isn't for nothing. <laughs> I can still use it. And I hope to use my other language skills as well. And the fact that I love telling stories. I love telling stories on YouTube to, to my pupils. And that's also why I'm a teacher. But I don't want to tell my stories inside a classroom environment. And that's the realization that I had, uh, well, last year actually, this year. So therefore I'm going to do something else and what it will be, I don't know yet, perhaps something in journalism. I really do appreciate you all following me along for such a long time already. I mean, it's been uh, over a year that I now have this channel and my Instagram and the amount of friends that I've made through this Instagram and YouTube channel uh, is enormous. <laughs> and I really, really, really enjoy it. So thank you all for following me along, commenting uh, on my videos. Um, it's too bad that the algorithm of YouTube sucks. So my videos don't get to pop up on every screen. But I will try my best to work very hard. And uh, hope to see you all very, very soon. If you have any questions perhaps for me. Or things you want to know. Then do let me know. I'm also planning on making a video about me as a teacher. Because I got some questions about that as well. Uh, so I will definitely do that of course i don't get to film where i work <laughs> but i um i probably do get to show you something okay once again thank you give me a follow on instagram follow me along subscribe like comment everything anything <laughs> okay goodbye